to Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We are here live. It is the last day of August. Can you believe we're about to be in the ninth month of 2009? Thank you again so much for joining us. I am going to be massive news blitzing coming up in about 40 minutes. Huge news blitzing. I'm just going to go over the headlines. First, we're going to take calls right now for the next 40 minutes. Then we have a special guest in the third and fourth hour I'll announce right before they join us coming up at the end of this hour. We're now also simulcasting the syndicated radio show in the second, third, and fourth hour at PrisonPlanet.tv. Today, I want to thank all the PrisonPlanet.tv members. I want to just give everybody a heads up here. Coming up... Next Tuesday, September 8th, we are going to have a very special announcement, a huge announcement here on air. This will be the biggest single thing we have ever done. And that is coming up next Tuesday here on the show. I'm just going to leave it at that and tell folks, you never know, I may even launch it early and do it Friday. The point is... Uh, I may take off Monday, take off from radio and be up here working on the new film, Fall the Republic. But uh, the film's already great, but I've got like 15 days, 20 days, maybe max to finish it and send it off for mass production. And we're just racing to cut stuff out and add stuff. we got too much material. I did 19 different flights, 19 different interviews, main interviews, and... 30 or 40 more sit-downs with other people, man on the street, scientists, you name it, for Fall of the Republic. So that is uh, something I've been working on really intensely. But we have something huge coming up on September 8th. I'm just going to leave it at that for everybody. And I'm not going to belabor it. <laughs> My life is so weird. Uh, it is good to be empowered. It is good to be involved. It is good to be informed. It is good to be off the bench, in the field, taking action. What's the famous Teddy Roosevelt quote about in the arena? P pull that up for me, guys, please. The Teddy Roosevelt quote in the arena. Print that off. After I take some calls, I'm going to read it. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Nelson in California. Nelson, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, how you doing, Alex? This is my second time calling. Um, I'm also a member of uh, We Are Change in L.A. Good, I you're taking calling. action. Yeah, um, yeah. one of the things I kind of brought up on the forum was uh, talking about the Michael Moore's new movie, uh, Capitalism, A Love Story. I, I, I've only watched the uh, the trailer, but, you know, knowing how his films have been in the past and seeing all his trailers. Yeah, he's going to blame free market on what happened, not criminality, not offshore banks that actually fund the fake environmental movement, actually fund socialization of wealth so it can be pooled and extracted internationally. He's playing the false left-right paradigm. And our trailers got released the same day, unbeknownst to me. I didn't do that on purpose. Ours had more than him until Fall of the Republic did, until they put it on the main page as a featured video, as an advertisement, as the top bar, as the top ad on YouTube, and he's still barely beating us. I mean, people really are tired of his left-right system, but, but go ahead and make your point. Well, I just wanted to ask, you know, do you think we should be, uh, you know, at least protesting or not, not maybe boycotting the film, at least, at least when the movie premieres? When does it come out? Uh, I think it was October 5th, I think, or 2nd. Yeah, ours comes out uh, October 21st and gets into the whole banking thing and how both parties are involved and how it's a criminal takeover, not socialist. Again, the media says it's socialist. It's, this is not socialism, and I'm not a fan of socialism, but it's better than this. This is not socialism. I mean, if we're going to have the debt of 20. 3.7 trillion and growing, it'll be 27.5 again by the one year anniversary, at, uh, the way it's trending. That would pay for all the mortgages three times over. Three times in one year. Nothing to do with mortgages. That's not socialism. Socialism would be taking money from the middle class and redistributing it and from the rich. The rich are all tax free and exempt. I haven't seen the trailer yet. I just, Burmans was showing me the numbers. Sunday of, look, we have more views for your trailer 
than Michael Moore had till it was put at the top of the page. But uh, go ahead. Well, yeah, that's that's great. I, that's that's pretty much just why you pretty much answered for me. Just you know, wanted your opinion on that as far as. Oh yeah, he'll 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 call guaranteed for a new global regulator over corporations, which is what the global corporations that engineered this are calling for. So see, oh, we screwed up. Give us unlimited power. Just like in the in the 90s, they said, give us more power to stop any regulatory crises or economic crises, and they got rid of Glass-Steagall. I appreciate your call. In fact, uh, a bunch of big scientific publications, including New Scientist, came out with reports that a handful of global banks own basically everything. Well, of course they do. They own the corporations. They own it all. These are just different subsidiaries. IBM, Microsoft, it's all government slash private corporate. Corruption is so bad now that you're not allowed to photograph royal families anywhere in the world. You can photograph any citizens you want, any movie stars you want on the street, but courts will rule for the Dutch and British royal family that it's illegal to photograph them. They're God. Because they own the oil companies, they own the derivatives, through fraud, they own everything. They're God. Then they're saying to you, you have no rights and you're their slave. you got to say, 1776, I'm not your property, scumbag. They just so happen to be a bunch of eugenicists who openly want to drug your water supply and your food. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errors and comes short again and again, because there is not effort without error and shortcomings. But who does actually strive to do the deed? who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotion, who spends himself in worthy causes, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Get out in the arena, ladies and gentlemen. Draw your sword in the end for the war. And go out and start hacking down our enemies. We have the truth. We have the passion. We have it all. So deal destruction in the info war to the enemy. Unleash your power. Can't you feel it seething in you, rising? Can't you feel your ancestors demanding that you shake off the fluoride and mercury haze and that you rise up with power and strength and honor and stand up for the innocent, stand up for our country, stand up to the parasites? All these lesser men bind themselves together at hordes and try to pull down the strong. Stand up to the eugenicist trash. Stand up to Rahm Emanuel's brother and tell them that they are not your gods, your owners, your kings. And that you have an absolute divine right as a free creature made in the image of the creator of the universe to be free. Thinker in Texas, you're on the air. I had two things, but your your talk right now is so strong. I'm going to start with the second one, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, this is something from Mary Baker Eddy. I belong to no church. I want that to be very clear before I read this. She says, the great battle of Armageddon is upon us. The powers of evil are leagued together in secret conspiracy against the Lord and his Christ. Large numbers in desperate malice are engaged day and night in organizing actions against us. Their feeling and purpose are deadly, and they have sworn enmity against the lives of our standard bearers. And it goes on like that. And that was written in 1886. Um, she knew that conspiracies were terrible then and that they would be coming out more and more. And it, you're uncovering them now, and thank God for that. Um, the question I had for you first was, and you, you answered it a little while ago partly, but I would love it if you would make another comment. You said, every time the clouds come in, they chemtrail them out. We're having a terrible drought in, in Austin. The animals are staggering around. The plants are dying. Can you say a few more words about that? And after that, I have one more question, if I could. 
We're making a chemtrail film. We have the government's own documents. They admit they're doing it in mass. And you tell the general thumb-sucking public on fluoride that they're chemical spraying us with barium salts and aluminum dioxide, that they come in and kill the cloud formations, that they're engineering a worldwide drought. And uh, it's just admitted they're doing it. And it's just going to continue because there's nothing these evil people won't do. I mean, it's John P. Holdren just search engine his name and the term geoengineering and he admits their giant chemtrail program well, exactly all these years exactly what we said chemtrails are they now come out in the wall street journal and say they're good hi here in austin in particular do you think because there seem to be rain all around us it just doesn't come here